Dear audience of the RIG International Film Festival, um, I'm very happy to meet you in this mediated way. And now uh, we are about to have a wonderful conversation, hopefully, with the director of the film, Bebia Amonsur Desir, which is Zsuzsa Dobraskos. Hi, Zsuzsa. <laughs> nice to meet you. How are you? Hi. Very nice to meet you. I am, I am, I am good. If uh, if uh, I will not think about what's happening in the world and what we are all going through, I'm I'm actually I'm actually all right. Thank you for asking. Yeah. As we have very limited time, I think that we could directly jump into your uh, film. Uh, but beforehand, um, I wanted to ask about your transition to cinema and the moving images, because I'm aware that. You're also a painter and also a writer, and you're very interested in uh, in the poetry uh, and and the text itself. Maybe you could give a additional context to our uh, audience uh, about your transition, because this is your feature uh, debut. Uh, yes, yes, right, correct. I was educated from the childhood. I was always in art, and uh, after I educated from the university uh, I was mostly pain uh, I, I was a painter but somehow I, I didn't get full full satisfaction from it I found that the idea I have and the result between the idea and result such a huge gap kind of uh, because of technique because of the paintings oil canvas or my problems I don't know I I didn't achieve what I really feel and know and somehow the paintings it was it was nice skill to have but it didn't satisfy me fully and then I started to write short stories and this is a wow now the idea is quite close to the result and I love it. I, st I still do it. And of course, the scripts, uh, I read the scripts as well. And, <clears throat> and, I th and finally, uh, a lot of friends told me, why, why don't you combine all of these uh, things you have? And, uh, and I, I didn't know how, because it was, very, it was very scary in the beginning. And I said, why not? Why, why can't I combine, first of all, my experience, life experience, long, long lives I lived in, and then some of my skills together. And it's how I decided finally to jump from this, uh, from this cliff to the completely unknown something and I decided to make the film and uh, and I and I, I the, the, the my biggest fear was that I will not it will not satisfy me as well but somehow I, I feel I like doing that and uh, now I am in the production of the next movie and I like it yes yes it's how life pushed me to this field, I believe, and I, and I did, yeah. I'm glad you did. But uh, <laughs> speaking about uh, Baby Amonsul Dersir, uh, there are a lot of uh, entries and paths, how you can think about it, how you can watch the film. Um, because of course, there is this uh, Georgian scenery aspect, the texture uh, of it. Then we have this mythological path, and also your personal childhood memories that are actually the very essence of it. Maybe you can deliver in your own words how this combination started um, and what it, this project means to you personally. Uh, I think the question uh, I wanted to speak about in this, the, for, in this project for me was who, what makes us, us? What kind of, uh, uh, for example, if I, let, let's say, if I have problem in the field, in some field right now, where this problem came from? And of course we all uh, uh, visited some psychoanalyst or psych kind of we all understand it all comes from the child a lot of things come from the childhood a lot of things come from the um, 
the untalented parents, for example, or some strange situation you faced in the early age. And then you carry all this stuff around. And the pain I felt from my childhood, I, I felt this pain supposed to have a relief in some form. And I, I decided... <clears throat> I decided to make film about that. And I understand that it's not only my problem. In uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, there, there are many unfair situations in childhood of many, many people. And, and I like to see uh, all these small connections between uh, what can kind of cause and effect of this uh, things we all connected. Kind of, it's very, very difficult all to explain. Uh, and I just wanted to, to express my, my pain and my uh, view of how it's all connected. My uh, feel, feeling that we all kind of go through the completely crazy maze, sometimes in the full darkness. And, uh, and we always wait, for, all of us, we are waiting for the, wow, wow, the exit soon, it will be amazing exit. And after it will be, everything will be amazingly fine. It will be light, I don't know, heaven, whatever it is. And finally, we understand that if every um, exit from any new maze, it's uh, entrance to the new one. And to accept it, to understand it, and even to to learn to love it, kind of to love this quest of life. This is uh, what I was talking about. Hmm. I, yeah, I have a lot of things there. I I decoded a lot of lot of my 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 thinking in the film. And I, I would love everyone to see their own film about my, I, I, I gave the music, but the dancing is the viewers supposed to dance themselves. Yeah, great. I, I agree about those multi layers of, 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 of not only your personality and your experience, but we can also project our, our experience um, while being in childhood. What I sympathize the most was um, your approach towards uh, Ariana's relationship with her family and the structure of the family. And that there is this presence of much older generations that are dictating the path for those who are in the early days of their own kind of path. Maybe you can talk about your personal uh, attachment towards your uh, grandmother, because I've read you also had difficult relationship and about the family structure and also the uh, young woman's perspective as well in the film. Right, I, um, I, uh... Seriously, don't want viewers to think about me like a person when they watch the movie. Or I, I, I love when the product, whatever it is, paintings or drawings or film or story, kind of will not attach to the person who who did it because I think it's completely two different. Uh, fields what what i want i want uh i want uh for the audience to to feel kind of i i want to to share the emotions and i i believed uh the film will can uh kind of push push some buttons where you can feel yourself you can find your pain wow this is this is where it's from or i don't want to teach anyone anything i just want them to to feel something new very similar or remind some some feelings they have in the past and kind of start to think what all all of, all of this about uh, please start to think please see how how life is not 
on one hand, it's very simple things. In another hand, it's multiple complexity and crazy and, and insane. And think about this kind of to I, I pushed my my people who wants to see it and likes it. I push them to be philosophers of their own lives to find the all, all things there. <coughs> and sorry. And that's it. I I don't know how to how to say it better. It's just just please feel, please think, please see the different point of view, see the picture, even in the composition of the movie, pe people can be puzzled. Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes composition. And I know when we started to shoot and a lot of people, technical people behind the camera, <coughs> sorry, they asked me, Zhuzha, are you sure? Are you sure you want to cut the faces? Like, I, are you crazy? I do, do understand that there is some laws. But for me, uh, to sometimes to break the laws, it's just to push someone to think, mm -hmm. just to think, because not to sleep all the time, not to do the things we used and we bored from, kind of push them in the new reality. This is my new reality. If you ready, go there, meditate, and probably you will feel something new or find something new in yourself. But you previously touched upon the, the framing uh, when you tried and usual uh, compositions. Um, while you were crafting and making them, uh, were you thinking about resembling the perspective of the main character of uh, Ariadna herself, or this is more like a, a way or, or metaphor that we cannot entirely see uh, the wholesome of something. So we have very limited uh, access to something or was was the intention uh, of this framing style? It's intention, it's, it's the, the emotions we have. For example, now I'm sitting in front of you, you feel very safe, comfortable. It's kind of how it's supposed to be. If suddenly I will start to speak to you like this, you will have new emotions. Yeah. Does Zhuzha wants to hide or she wants or she doesn't want me to see something and what's going on? And your brain start to work kind of intensively. And to doing that with the framing in my film, I just kind of increase the emotions I want to express. And I, I kind of uncomfortably push someone from, okay, let's say from the comfort zone, I don't like this old cliche phrase, but just to, to think, to start, what the hell is going on? For example, if, in, in, if someone is shooting something like this, you, you, you immediately will, you, you immediately will start to create your own explanation as what's going on. And I believe this extra explanation, uh, this is very necessary. I think to, to be able to move yourself with the help of the art, you need to, to do some work as well. It's very important if you just uh, watch the movie, didn't, didn't struggle at all. You need to struggle a little bit to, to achieve something in any fields and in film as well, you need to, to give the viewers possibility to work, to think, to adjust to your perspective. And I think this is what uh, I, I, I want the audience to do, to, to kind of to come to the film and return with a new kind of uh, adjustment of the, okay, it's, it's, it sounds all awful. Okay, brain adjustment, let's say, but, but maybe, maybe to activate the spectator to have very active uh, or intense relationship with the, with the imagery itself. Yes, yes, exactly. This, this is one of the yeah, needs as well. And this is very well said. Yes, yes, to, to be more intense, to be more Yes, yes, you are right.
<laughs> but but uh, Pris, when I asked about uh, your personal um, history of your childhood or or teenage years, um, how is it actually in terms of revisiting yourself in that period while you were making the film, or you try to distance yourself, or or how it was for you personally, actually. No, no, no. I, I think we all are uh, revisiting our, our whatever past or our the brightest, pleasant or unpleasant moments of the past all the time. It doesn't matter if you make something about it or not. If sometimes we are cooking, we're thinking, oh my God, remember when my first date w went wrong. Uh, it's um, This is why, for example, the film, structure of the film was uh, the uh, the present and the past was kind of uh, intertwining. Uh, intertwining. Yeah. yeah, but they they it's uh, uh, I I actually ask not anyone to call it flashbacks because it's not flashbacks. It's all happened in the same time. We all live uh, standing in the present time, but we always. Uh, part of us in the past, part of us in the future, we are thinking, wow, how this happened? Oh, oh my God, this cup I used to, ah, this is coffee. Oh, my ex loved coffee, but I hate it. And kind of it's all in our head all the time. We are, we are, uh, and frankly speaking, I never understood the phrase live here and now. I can't, I, I need to live everywhere in my past, in my childhood. And uh, this is the film, and it's, it's how I structured the film, like past, present, or, or kind of um, like mosaic of the of our brain activity. For me, it's always it's always present. It's always here, of course. But past, future, somebody's story, my fantasy, somebody's past, somebody's present. It's it's kind of such a uh, completely crazy reality we live in. And in this film, I, sh I, I try to show at least some, I try to, to show this, this presence of all what happened inside of us. I think in my new film, it will be even more complex, this uh, combination of thinking, viewing, understanding, reminding, and I love to do it. <laughs> but uh, oh. yeah, I also wanted to ask about the, the Georgian sites, mm -hmm. and the presence of, uh, of Georgia as a country. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your attachment um, and why particularly this, this uh, land. I went to Georgia for the first time I don't recall maybe seven years ago and maybe a little longer because somehow this pandemic time compressed. I can't believe we are already two years. I, I can't believe it. I, I don't know how, how long ago it happened. Sometimes I feel oh, probably it's four weeks. Sometimes, wow, two years. Kind of, let's say it was seven years ago and I fell in love with the country. Mostly <clears throat> I fell in love with the people. They're very kind of, Mm, amazing looking people. Everyone is can sing, play instrument, uh, very, uh, they have so uh, kind of advanced in music, art, uh, and hedonism kind of life, you know, they love to, to drink, to eat, to dance. And I was, uh, and I thought, oh my God, this is, uh, this is amazing place to, to, for the, any video, uh, visual things. And then when I decided to make a film and I knew the uh, beginning kind of the, one of the story will be the childhood, uh, that Tbilisi is very, it's a place like kind of like in Venice in some, in some, uh, in some point that like it's a, a beauty which is in the, in the, uh, age of of kind of fading, you know, in the age of dying or something. And uh, and this uh, when I 
was in the center of Tbilisi, I just felt it. Oh my God, it's it's kind of like my my childhood, but it's not. But I feel here like in the childhood and I understand maybe, and many people told me I felt so great in Tbilisi and somehow it's reminded me of my childhood. It's, it's kind of everyone's childhood for me. And I decided, wow, this is the amazing place to do the part of the childhood. But then it's, it's all become very Georgian. It's all become, I understood the story is completely Georgian and, um, and I stayed there and, and I just love it. Mm -hmm. And the the word uh, baby, uh, as understood in Georgian, it means uh, granny, grandmother. Yes, yes, correct. And I don't know how for um, for you, but for me, everything was a little bit strange first in Georgia because, of course, I don't speak any Georgian language. But uh, because in Georgian, a f a father is mama. And ma, ma, mother is dad, and uh, uh, the grandmother, it's a baby. Kind of, for me, it's all mixed up because I can't call dad uh, mama, you know, it's just, it's just not comfortable for me. And uh, I don't know how and why it's happened in Georgia like this, but I found this uh, baby, so sound of it. It's like... Uh, of course, it's granny, meaning of this is granny, but baby, for me, it's a baby. It's someone who, who did something probably wrong, but not because it's because just there is no experience or knowledge. It's kind of very interesting aspect of the language. And I decided that uh, baby will be title of the film. And then I had an epigraph, which was French phrase, <coughs> uh, I'm on soul desire <clears throat> in my own Levish. And, but somehow in our first premiere in Rotterdam, they put it together and it's become kind of long. And I said, okay, if, if life wants it to be together and probably for some people it's too long, it's too kind of pretentious, it's too, but it's happened like this. It's, it's happened like this and I decided to follow it. I, I love to sometimes to follow things because which I don't understand. It's fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed the, the title. I think this is what you previously said about the framing and the composition that demands for us to think and decode what is the meaning behind it and how it refers to film, the characters, uh, your attentions, what is our projections, etc. I think it works perfectly, yeah. yeah but yeah, and I love, it's like charades. It's, there are a lot of charades in the film and I think some people probably will have time and wish to to kind of to decode it and I like it mm -hmm. yeah and also wanted to ask you the, the final mm -hmm. question uh when you were referring to this reverse situation and in Georgian language about um uh, mama and dada uh because for example in Latvia we have this very standardized uh version so we have mother and father mat and tavs uh and but here in, in your film, there is a great, um, let's say the power of, of women in a way and the matriarchy, which is very, very present. Maybe you can talk about approaching uh, this type of structure a little bit more, which I found really fascinating. Um, I understood the question, but uh, I'm not so good in this social, uh, problems I'm I I I didn't I didn't uh, had this goal to kind of to go this way to show the matriarchat or pat patriarchat in, in, in Georgia it just happened the way it is it's happened from my observation of Georgia but I never seriously <clears throat> kind of studied so mm -hmm. nice of course in in, uh, in of course in georgia there is there is some sign that uh the men are very much <clears throat> kind of facade of the men are oh, we are we are actually 
<clears throat> in charge of everything, but in reality, the woman more powerful and it's like in this, if the man is head, the woman is neck and she turns the head, whatever she wants to turn it. It's kind of very co complex situation because new generation in Georgia, they, they absolutely European. They, they, they don't like this, whatever, or some of old tradition of Georgia or, but it's still, it's because it's such a friendly people. It's such a lovely, friendly people, even the, even the powerful different genders, sometimes it's for me, it's like just a play, you know, they kind of, a game, they, they play this game, but inside maybe they laugh a lot, but I, I didn't study closely the things because for me, the, I love the, the, I call them vertical stories where the, people mostly have problems and speak to some something up there, not in horizontal in between them. But I, I like if you if you saw, I just wanted to, I, I was listening, uh, reading, watching a lot of documentaries and stuff about Georgia to understand the scholarship of the of the place. And uh, and when I came to the sorry, it's, there is a uh, remodeling next door. When I came to Georgia and group uh, technical group read my script, they asked me, Georgia is your dad or your mom Georgian?" The, the script is very Georgian, and I, I I took it like a huge huge compliment. It's just the study of it makes me Georgian. And sometimes I don't remember which festival they call me, oh, Georgian writer. And I'm like, great, now I'm Georgian writer. I don't have, I, I know probably five words in Georgia and Georgian, but I, but I like it. Mm. And the language just doesn't, uh, people ask me, I had a lot of questions about how you can make film or make anything in the language which is your not your native language how you can do it and uh, uh yes first i thought oh my god i will <laughs> the trans translate this but uh it's absolutely uh it's absolutely doesn't matter uh, you you actually and now i am absolutely certain that we communicate with uh, language, it's just some percentage of communication. Probably if you need some technical information or some information, date or something, but mostly we, we communicate with completely different things. It's probably vibration or I don't know, aura, the, the, the expression, body language. It's absolutely, everyone can make a film in the, whatever language the hell they want. Yeah. And I yeah, but I, I, what I wanted to add that we can understand uh, the films that are made in foreign languages. So this goes vice versa, actually, uh, that there is this kind of universal pattern uh, still in the cinema itself, <laughs> which is unquestionable. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Zhuzha, very much. We have to wrap up, unfortunately. And um, Thank you once again for your wonderful film and we're wishing the very best with your next one. And hopefully we will meet in Riga and also at the Riga International Film Festival. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you. Bye.